So to round off the top 20 holidays for August 11th, number one is World War II victories, okay? World War II victories, when it came to Howard Zinn, he said that there were three holy wars, the American Revolution, the Civil War, and World War II. Now, he encouraged everybody to think about them differently, but because it's Howard Zinn, and I like those wars. Those wars had good outcomes. People walk away from those wars feeling good, and they should. Freeing the slaves, overthrowing the imperialist British bastard, you know, the fucking redcoats, throwing, you know, telling those Confederate slave-owning pieces of shit, World War II fucking, you know, those Nazis and those, you know, fascists, those fascist, racist pieces of shit, making sure they get... These are, fanta these are three holy wars. So he encouraged me to think outside the box, and I will, Howard Zinn. But uh, I do like those wars. And uh, I think when you actually highlight those wars, it kind of shows you how all these other wars are just kind of like, what? We're in Afghanistan? Didn't we fight the Russians when they're in Afghanistan? Now we're in Afghanistan. So or we're the premier empire. We're doing what Hitler wanted to do, but we just did it better or something? We're like the nice empire? We're like a benevolent empire? I don't understand what... So there's a lot of World War II victories on August 11th. The, if I have to pick out one event, I'll read the rest of them off real quick, but one event, 1943, August 11th, American amphibians land at Brolo on the north coast of Sicily. Amphibians, so they can, you know, uh, boats that could drive on land. So you had Americans storming the beaches of Brolo. The north coast of Sicily, Truscott's 3rd Division would roll up a tidy bag of German prisoners. Lots of Italian fascist racist pieces of shit were shot down or grabbed for prisoners of war. So this is a successful landing, right? Before um, the storming of the beaches of Normandy, you had Americans who were storming the beaches of Brolo in Italy. So that's a fan, you know, 1943. 1940, August 11th, 38 German aircraft is shot down over England. So they're trying to bomb England, but England fights back, drops 38 planes. 1942, August 11th, Lieutenant General Bernard Montgomery makes landing on Gibraltar, Gibraltar, Gibraltar Spain. So storming the beaches of Gibraltar, storming the beaches of Brolo, storming the beaches of Normandy. 1943, August 11th, the Red Army recaptures Tuck to Cuck you jab at Kharkov. I don't know. Red Army takes city away from Germany. I think actually they lose that battle. But for the day, for the day, they get that city. T C H U K U J E V at Kharkov. K H A R K O V. 1944, August 11th, the French 5th Armored Division recaptures seas. I guess seas is a city. 1944, Operation Boomerang. This is a U.S. Air Force raid on oil refineries in the Japanese-occupied Palembang, Sumatra, Indonesia. And the U.S. Air Force, bombing, you know, wanted to bomb the oil refinery, ended up just bombing a tiny little building. But they dropped mines into the river, and that blew up three boats, and three were badly damaged. So, was it successful? Not, you know, as successful as you would like for it to be. And the British furnished search and rescue missions, just in case. So the British were, you know, the British had the Americans' backs. But, uh, let's see, Japanese defenders, they didn't hit any of the bombers, so all the bombers came back home safely, so there's a success. Right, that little building of the oil refinery was hit. Three ships were sunk. So I feel like, in terms of war, this was uh, this was a success for several reasons. Right, the the Operation Boomerang that proved that XX Bomber Command they could lead complex operations, that B-29s could safely travel long distances over water, and then just think about the psychological effects. Right, you think you're just walking around all. What, America cares about Palembang? All we got is just this oil, you know, um, this oil factory, this oil rig. Why would they bomb us? We're, we live in Palembang. And yeah, we're on the side. Well, it's Japanese occupied, too, so. So, yeah, that was, uh, it wasn't as, you know, I got a lot of details on that, but it wasn't as awesome as the U.S. amphibians landing on Brolo on the north coast of Sicily, August 11, 1943. 
and then just, you know, shooting down them goddamn racist fascist pieces of shit, you know, fucking up those goddamn Nazi and Mussolini Hitler loving pieces of shit. 1944, August 11th, Winston Churchill is going to, you know, arrive in Italy. He just, you know, went to Italy, and that's... Winston Churchill is a great hero of World War II, but he's kind of a piece of shit overall, so it's kind of like, okay. <laughs> All right, Churchill, okay, that's enough out of you. Now, that's number one. All the World War II victories, you know, I put them together. I think that hearing about them, that we were on the side of right, on the side of good, I think that's, uh, that's good for inspiration. Um, I'll just read a couple of these. So, let's see. Number two, the moon of Mars, Deimos, is going to be discovered. Number three, you're going to have Wi-Fi, a precursor to Wi-Fi, the frequency hopping, uh, frequency hopping spread spectrum. is going to be patented by Hedy Lamar and George Anfield. And they both, um, they get the patent and then it leads to Wi-Fi. The Hedy Lamar was this, you know, she this big actress. And she was also an inventor. Invented a $30 billion invention. Number four, the Battle of Atta is, you know, it's when Theodoric the Great and the Ostrogoths defeat Flavius Odoroser, who is a Scree, uh, a Skyri, so the Skyri Herui German Odoroser is going to be defeated by the German Theodoric the Great. And if Odoacer is the last of the Western, then Theodore the Great is, you know, the final nail in the coffin of the Roman Empire. Number five, Steve Wozniak, co-founder of Apple, born 1950, August 11th, 1960. Chad declares their independence from France. They have a national holiday, Independence Day, in Chad, the 4x100 relay, World Records Day. Carl Lewis is going to break the record, but then the Jamaican team is going to break that record in under 37 seconds. The 4x100 relay race, they were able to do it 2012, August 11th, at the London Olympic Games. At the London Olympic Games, you're going to break this record, so that's fantastic. 1989, Voyager 2, they discover the two partial rings of Neptune. That's number eight. Number nine is Mountain Day for Japan. Okay, I've already talked about those. Now let's just finish up the list of the top 20, right? Number 10, you're going to have 1965, August 11th. There's a six-day insurrection beginning in the Watts section of L.A., the Watts Uprising, the Watts Rebellion in the ghetto. This happens in Los Angeles, August 11th, 1965. 21-year-old Marquette Fry, this is a black man, driving a 1955 Buick on parole for robbery, was pulled over by the California Highway Patrol. Lee Minicus for alleged reckless driving. It's, uh, you know, the reason why black folks, it's like they're pissed off whether the, you know, black person was in the wrong or in the right, because it doesn't matter because the cops are always against him. It doesn't matter if they're in the wrong or in the right. I actually just got, you know, I just finished. This is Watch Riots in 1965. We're having, you know, similar shit going on today. I saw a video where a white cop gets out, and he's pointing a gun at a black kid, and the black kid didn't do shit. They called the police because there was another black, you know, uh, a black male that had committed a crime. And here they pull up to the scene, see a black man, a black boy, 15 years old, and points an assault rifle at him. And then keeps it on him. And then tells him to put his hand on the thing and do this and do that. And 1965, six-day insurrection starts in Watts section of L.A. So it seems like perhaps, maybe... You had Marquette Fry. He might have been drunk. He might have been drinking. He might have been driving, you know, recklessly. And then Lee Minicus might have been doing what he was supposed to do. But for black consciousness and Watts, there's no way that Lee Minicus could have done anything good. And then they were, you know, they were saying that the community was saying, oh, my God, not only did the cops shake Marquette Fry down, but the cops hurt a pregnant woman. And then that's what set off, you know, everybody. They're, then mobs just started roaming, and then the riots happened. And the riots are going to last for six days. 3,500 were arrested. And the point, the main point of the Watts riots is the same point as today. We've got to stop the police brutality and discrimination in housing, employment, schooling systems. 34 people are going to die. 14,000 of the California National Guard came out. Middlemen between the police and black folks. The Watts riots 
proves to me that the soldiers, the troops, are better than the cops. When it came to the Watts riots, the black folks were rioting, and then the white police, so it's clearly black v. white, right? And it's not black v. white, it's everybody versus the racist. It's everybody against police brutality. It's everybody against crime. That's the battle, right? It's not a race thing. It's the, the uh, get to the roots of the system. So my uh, my puppy here, Brewster is his given name, but Yida, for Tauga Yida. Oh Yida, he just kind of likes to chew on random things, and then usually, you know, I'll say you can't chew on that by taking it away from him, and then he gets it. He understands. But uh, he's just having a having a good old time with my slippers right now. Right? You need some attention, huh? Always need attention. Okay, I gotcha. All right. So the Watts riots shows me that the troops are better than the cops because there was police riots. Yeah, black folks were rioting, but the cops were rioting too. And how many police riots are there? How many times did the police just go around beating the shit out of anybody and everybody? That's okay. But if black folks did the same thing, no more police in our streets. We're keeping, we're maintaining law and order. That's what the Black Panthers are saying, and yet that's not good enough either. Fascists don't believe in anything. Fascists, even if you love America, and you say America is opposed to fascism, fascists would be like, hey, you don't love America. No, I love America. It's not the fascist. Fuck the fascist. The, the country, the people, you know, it, it's mostly good, but the fascists, the racists, the assholes, the criminals, the, you know, these pieces of shit, Fucking police are racist, fascist pieces of shit. They are ruining this country. So this is going to be the worst unrest in L.A. since the Rodney King riots, 1992. So, you know, L.A. is going to be peaceful for 30 years until Rodney King gets, you know, beat up. So the end result, $40 million, uh, $40 million worth of property damage, 34 people died. 14,000 California National Guard came out, then 3,500 folks were arrested. So, more on the actual incident, right? You had this man, Marquette Fry. He's only 21 years old. He's driving his mother's Buick, so that's probably the crime right there, right? DWB, driving while black. 21-year-old Marquette Fry, he's a black man, driving a 1955 Buick, gets arrested out by the house. Fry's mother and brother both come out, and then they're going to fight with the police. Fry's mother, she gets to the intersection of Avalon and 116th Street, and she starts scolding Rena Price's, Marquette Fry's mother. So Rena Price is scolding her son about how, you know, his reckless driving and what have you. And then somebody is going to shove Rena Price. Somebody. Somebody. Let's say the cops, you know, push. let's say it was that Minicus. That Lee Finicus. Lee Minicus. You know, shoves Rita Price, and then Fry is going to get struck. Price, they say, jumped on an officer, so we don't know who pushed Rena Price, but we do know that Rena Price fought back, and then a cop pulls out a shotgun. And after this, that's, you know, that's basically in vague terms, that's what happened. Community members reported that the police had roughed up Fry, and they kicked a pregnant woman. So I don't know if Rena Price was pregnant or not. It doesn't seem like she was. She is a woman. So, okay, they're beating up a whole family, and uh, you know how telephone, you know how rumors work. But uh, the pregnant woman, right? The cops are attacking our, you know, pregnant women. They're attacking our babies. They're attacking our legacy. They're attacking our, you know, our basically natural inclination to continue ourselves. Rena Price, she's going to die June 10, 2013 at age 97. She never recovered the impounded Buick. Because the storage fees exceeded the car's value. So to think that Lee Minicus could have been a danger to Marquette Fry, of course Lee Finicus. Lee Minicus is a danger to Marquette Fry. They stole his car. They beat up him and his mother and his brother, and then they stole his fucking car. And what did they do in Annie Griffith? Oh, yeah, if you were drunk, you just sat in a drunk tank for the night, and then in the morning, Aunt B would bake you a cake. It's never been like Andy Griffith. It's never been like Andy Griffith for me, but that's the ideal. Cops walking around without guns. Cops who try to resolve conflict by the, their reputation, by the, their name and reputation only. And then treating people like treat, treating people like treat. Basically, he was a drunk, but he was harmless. 
He liked getting drunk. They threw him in jail. He slept there. And then he got out. You know, it was almost like, a, oh, there he is again, right? But that's a good thing. You're taking the drunk out of society. If anything, maybe you need to talk to the guy. But if that's his, you know, he's, he can use freedom however he wants. And it's actually the repeal of the uh, 18th Amendment actually guarantees every single adult, I think 21 and over, uh, their right to drink alcohol. Alcohol is an American right. You have a right to drink alcohol. So August 17th, you know, later, 1965, MLK is going to speak about it. He's kind of all over the place. He's, uh, you know, he realizes that there's social conditions. There's, it's not racism. It's just the social. It's the environment. It's the, you know, the conditions, the schools, the unemployment, inferior living conditions. And then there was also the Rumford Fair Housing Act, Proposition 14. It's a constitutional amendment sponsored by the California Real Estate Association that uh, fucked black people over. So all those things were combined, but he also, you know, he's, Martin Luther King is the one that says, riot is the language of the unheard. So nobody's listening to Watts. Nobody's paying attention to Watts. But he also says that riots are bullshit and it destroys your own community and it kind of makes the despair and the desperate of that community, it makes it worse for them. So, yeah, I think overall that the Watts Rebellion, you know, it's a rebellion, it's an uprising, so it wasn't successful, right? But it did show America that things, you know, all, you know, this great country isn't so great for all of us. And, um, and I think we can, you know, let's talk about the Watts riots so we can put today's, you know, events into perspective. There's a, let's see, 1990 film that depicted the Watts riots from the perspective of Bob Richardson as a resident of Watts called Heat Wave. So you can check out Heat Wave. Menace to Society is set in Watts, L.A. from 1970s to 1990s. So you can watch Menace to Society. You can watch Heat Wave. There's a, let's see, Remember the Titans. It was referred to in Remember the Titans. And the produ producers of Conquest of Planet of the Apes said that the Ape Rebellion was inspired by the Watts Riots. <coughs> now, I got some mixed feelings on that. That was a disparaging thing for black folks. White folks would say they look like monkeys, they look like apes, and there's that anti-intellectual strand, right? I didn't come from no apes. You did. You did. Just because you denied, I don't have five fingers, I don't have blue eyes. You can deny the truth all that you want. That doesn't make the truth any less truthful. So, remember the Titans, Menace to Society, to society Heat Wave, and Conquest of Planet of the Apes. The reason why I don't think that matters, we all came from apes. We all look like monkeys. We all look like chimps and bonobos. And those are, you know, our closest animal relatives are the chimps and the bonobos. We can learn more about ourselves by looking at the chimps and the bonobos. And when it comes to the whole concept of Planet of the Apes, the humans are invading the apes' planet, and the apes are rebelling because this is our planet. So it's right. It's correct. And so I, I have some mixed feelings, but I feel like I'm going to give them the benefit of the doubt and say that the, you know, ape rebellion inspired by the Watch Riots is, uh, that's, uh, you know, that, that's good. That's a good thing. It's, uh, it doesn't feel like they were trying to say, okay, blacks are a bunch of monkeys. I think they were saying that black folks were oppressed, and they said, fuck this oppression, we're going to rise up. So, Conquest of the Planet of the Apes. You can watch all those. Those all were about uh, the Watch Riots. The Watch Riots. Number 11, 1990, Germany's Weimar Constitution is signed into law. So, Germany was the big enemy of World War I. And actually, I just heard the Spanish flu ended World War I. So nature fights back, huh? Right? Everybody killing everybody in, the, you know, in these tiny trench warfare. And then all of a sudden, the Spanish flu is going to kill 50 to 100 million. Spanish flu is actually going to kill more people than the war killed. And uh, apparently, you know, Donald misspoke or whatever, but, um, and he, you know, says stupid shit all the time. But he's a piece of shit that shouldn't be in office. That's the main point. So people point out tiny little things, oh my gosh, he said that, oh my gosh, he said that, as if like every motherfucker knows every single detail to everything, and in fact when you speak right, this, I don't know if you've ever spoke before, 
most people speak, so I don't even understand. When you speak, I mean, you try to say exactly what you mean, but sometimes it gets a little discombobulated. So, uh, 1990, Germany's Weimar Constitution is signed into law. That's fantastic. Number 12, Gifford Pin, Pinchay, Balky Pinchay, Pinchot. He's born August 11th, 1865. He's a man who's going to help Teddy Roosevelt get a bunch of national forests designated. Taft is going to fire him, but he increased the U.S. forest reserves from 60 to 150, from 56 million acres to 172 million acres. He hated how the great sequoias were cut down for a tiny, you know, wood product for a goddamn toothpick. So he was born. We wouldn't have all the national forests without Gifford Pinchot. 1959, 13. Uh, August 11th, 1959, the 13th holiday, Sheremeti Evo International Airport in Russia is built, second largest in Russia. It could be airport day. Today could be airport day. Airport, that's a major undertaking. Did you build an airport? Number 14, Joe Rogan was born today in 1967, which makes him 53 years old. Joe Rogan is 53 years old, I'm 38, so he's got 15 years over me. 15th holiday, 1896, August 11th, pull chain light bulb. The pull chain light bulb. I've seen the pull chains, they're still around. But uh, Harvey Hubble of Connecticut is going to get that patented. <clears throat> he's going to get the pull chain light bulb patented. And today, Harvey Hubble Incorporated still exists today. With like 20, 30, 50, 100 different factories and millions, billions, they're selling electrical products. So Harvey Hubble Incorporated, you had no idea. Like that's, it all started with one man and a tiny little patent, and now it's this big-ass corporate conglomerate. And that's a legacy, right? Harvey Hubble still exists today in the corporate name only. But, you know, 1956, Elvis Presley sung Don't Be Cruel. I don't be cruel to a heart that's true. I don't want no other love. I don't want no other love. I don't want no other love. I don't be cruel. Uh, it's a good message. It's a good song. Uh, Elvis could be celebrated with just his birthday. But uh, I've heard, you know, I've gone, I've had heartbreak and don't be cruel ran through my head. Man, what? Don't be cruel to a heart that's true. What the fuck is the matter with you? Number 17, holiday, 1866, August 11th. The world's first roller rink opens in Newport, Rhode Island. We could have roller rink day. Here in Castile County, we don't have roller rinks. We don't have uh, movie theaters. We have nothing really fun to do. There's no, like, we have to make the fun, and that's okay. There's plenty of stuff to do if you got imagination. But uh, there's none of the, you know, uh, there's, roller rink would be nice, a dance hall or something, right? What, what the hell do people do for fun around here? Number 18th holiday. Number 18th, this is, I combined two things. So you had Cheech and Chong Day declared in San Antonio, Texas, August 11th, 1972. And then 2008 in the U.S., four 100 meters freestyle swim team of Michael Phelps is going to beat France by eight seconds, and we're going to win the gold and bring the world record on home. So 2008 in Beijing, Michael Phelps, Mr. Pothead Man, right? Beijing Olympics 2008. Well, it was before everything was legalized, and Michael Phelps is pothead, you know, smoking marijuana like motherfucker, and they're saying it's bad for your health, and yet the greatest swimming athlete in the world is a pothead. And in 1972, Cheech and Chong, my God, how forward-thinking. You know, it's kind of badass that these rappers, you know, talk about all this illegal shit. But Cheech and Chong was smoking marijuana, you know, uh, all the way back in the 60s and 70s, for 50, 60 years, before there was even any uh, smidgen of hope of marijuana becoming legal. I just had to rattle off the last ones. I'm almost, it's 18. So, uh, yeah, the Warriors of Marijuana, again, you know, Marijuana Day, that's okay, Jonathan. That's, God, that's all you care about, isn't it? Marijuana, marijuana, marijuana. Not really. I think these are fantastic days. Number 19, 1998, August 11th, Yasser Arafat is going to arrive in Cape Town, South Africa, by invitation of Nelson Mandela. 
Nelson Mandela hung out with Fidel Castro. Nelson Mandela hung out with Yasser Arafat. Not because these are traditional you know, enemies of America, but because they are decent, good people. Yasser Arafat going down to, you know, South Africa to visit Nelson Mandela, 1998, should tell you all that you need to know about Yasser Arafat. Number 20, 1962, the Volstock 3 is launched from the Bakuner Cosmodrome. Cosmonaut Adrian Nikolaya becomes the first person to float in microgravity. It's a 94-hour flight. He's going to set the endurance record at the time. He circled the Earth 64 times. 94 hours, he circled the earth 64 times, 90, 94, that's six, that's what, 24 times, what, about four days, four days, you had this man, right, cosmonaut Adrian Nikolaev, Adrian Nikolaev circled the earth uh, 64 times in less than four days, and he's going to travel 1.65 million miles. He's named the hero of Soviet Union. He's like the second person that, you know, circled the earth in Russia. So it's like, ah, uh, if you're not first or last. But really, I mean, we learned, my God, he circled the, how many, how many times have you circled the earth? Not even once. He did it 64 times. And then why he was circling the earth 64 times, the flat earthers, what are they going to say about that? You had Adrian Nikolaev circling the earth. 64 times, traveling 1.6 million miles, and you're going to say it's just a flat saucer? It's just a little flat plate? What about the moons and the stars? Is that all fake? Is it all a bunch of flat plates? Just a bunch of flat plates circling all over the place? That goes against common sense. That goes against, uh, you know, just basic logic and reason, not alone, you know, get into the scientific specifics of the damn thing. So, yeah, uh, it could be Cosmonaut Day, Adrian Nicolaia Day, Circling the Earth Day. Hey, guys, let's go circle the Earth 64 times. Now, if there's any of these honorable mentions or if you don't think the order of my list is correct, please tell me that you think one thing is more important than the other. I'm having to develop these things, and really I just list, you know, 30, 40, 50, 100 things or whatever, and then I just rank them, and then the best ideas just kind of float up to the top but there's a lot of things that I kind of skip over that, uh, you know, I kind of like. And um, just to mention uh, uh, some other honorable mentions, uh, 1978 La Freak by Sheik is released. 1991 Space Shuttle STS-43 Atlantis 9 lands. 1858, the first ascent of Iger in the Bernese Alps in Switzerland happens. 1860, U.S.'s first successful silver mill. Virginia City, Nevada's. Stablet 1874, Harry S. Parmalee of New Haven, Connecticut, patents a sprinkler head. 1909, SS Arapaho, first ship to use SOS distress signal. If any of those things, instant coffee is patented by let's see, Satori Cato of Chicago, Illinois. In 1903, Chris Hemsworth is born today. Hulk Hogan is born today. So, uh, also Pierre Louis Lyons, Tom Kilborn. Errol Irwin, Shargaff, James Brian Herrick. Uh, the U.S. troops entered the city of Maya against Puerto Rico, 1898, to liberate Puerto Rico from the Spanish oppressors. 1972, last ground combat unit leaves southern Vietnam. So, you know, all those are, you know, pretty important events. Are any of those better than the 20 events that I listed? If so, say something. Say something. Like, why did you put that on the bottom, and why did you put that on the top? That's so stupid and ridiculous. And even if it's if you're right, then I, you know, it makes it better. If you're wrong, then I feel, you know, more vindicated. And I, learning happens. Learning happens with honest, decent communication. Constructive criticism or not, good, honest communication, learning happens. So, yeah, everybody enjoy your August 11th. I'm John Masters, August 11th, 2020. Peace.